Oh, boy. <clears throat> Again, every morning, fighting technology is always so fun. But we're here. And so we should be good to go. So we'll just give it a quick second before diving in to today's topic, which is monsters. It's been really interesting, though, that as I've spent the last three weeks or so diving into the basics of ICRPG, and and yeah, there's been stuff that's tweaking, and I've been pulling from different things. I do feel that having this practice time has helped me develop a better working knowledge of ICRPG. It's definitely re reminded me of all the different levers that I can pull, which is really kind of the goal. Uh, just so that when I do plan a game or when I'm running a game, it's more on hand than not. Switch this over. Uh, grab my water. Excuse me. All right. Well, figure we'll dive right in. Let's, let's get everything settled. Technology is real, and it's scary sometimes. Um, so, hopefully this is working. All right, but, <clears throat> yeah. So, monsters. Surprise, surprise, I have another worksheet. Uh, this one is actually one that I put together in the style of Ezra Hardin's GM worksheet. Uh, just because I, I liked the set. I went together and kind of built out some things that I felt maybe missing. So, for example, monsters. Uh, I don't think he had a sheet for that. But if he did, it didn't have all the things that I liked to track. And I've included some different things that are not just in the, 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 the main rules, like Master Edition or even Core. I included things that I really enjoyed from community members. And I'll be going over those as well. Um, but yeah, on this worksheet, essentially, what I have is up here at the top, I have my basic information. So the world, the campaign, the monster's name, and the tier, and that comes from Master Edition. And then you over, over here you have the category, that comes from GM Grizzly's monster, uh, uh, monster supplement. Then you got your basic roles here, uh, you have your base action timer and death rattle. That actually came from Lon on the Discord server. Uh, had this great idea of how to do it, and I'll go over those. And then you have challenges, which is kind of in the GM section of ICRPG. You have building monsters, what you can do with them. And so I wanted to go over each of those and how they might work, and then build out a couple as well as show you some different ways or different things that have been done um, to make monsters over the over the years. But the the one thing that I will say before we dive in is that every monster does not need this level of detail when it comes to to making it. I mean, just look at altered state, and you'll get a really good idea of what's actually needed for a monster. I mean, 
Whoop. There we go. The Nano Drone. Flying Sentry. Two hearts, plus three to all rolls. Twin cannon assaults. You know, two twin assault cannons do two times gun effort. Shoots frag grenade every four rounds. That's entire enemy monster in altered state. You can see the same thing for spiders, for hunter kill units. Like, it's a little blurb versus, and neither one of these are bad. Both are good. Uh, you can see here that in ICRPG Core, the second edition, you had hearts, rolls, actions, all their actions, little extra text, little flavor, flavor dynamics. Like, you have a whole... Oh, that's really obnoxious. Okay. You have a whole page. So you can take a monster and flush it out to be a whole page, or you can have a little tiny blurb. And it all depends on how much you need as a GM to run at the table, right? Because there's going to be stuff that helpful planning, and then there's going to be stuff that's helpful when you're running it. So it's just up to you to decide how you want it. Um, but when it comes to this worksheet, it's getting an idea of all the different levers that you can pull in order to create more dynamic monsters than just something that stands in one place and beats their play beats the players over their head with a stick. So with that said, let's dive right in. So the first thing we got world campaign. We're not going to worry about that. We're not gonna necessarily worry about a name right now but let's talk about the tier system uh, of monsters and this came from master edition so let me pull that open um, okay so the idea for tiers is that you can essentially categorize um, you can essentially categorize monsters into different tiers and each tier essentially kind of gives you some guidelines on how to make it and Mike I just use affinity uh, photo uh, just basic you know photoshopping and things like that um, pen tools are great uh, for making straight lines but you can also do you can also just draw them by hand if you want maybe a little less uh, rigid straight lines a little bit more character to them okay Anyways, so you got tiers. So you can see that like tier one monsters are, these are your mooks, your minions, their wimps, the chumps, things like that. And so when you're creating a tier one monster, good rules of thumbs are that they should have roughly plus two stats. They really don't have an effort bonus. They really get one action. It's one heart. And if it's a super mook, it's really just a one hit, one HP monster. So right there, you're, you're thinking about, okay, this is a little a little weak skeleton kind of a thing. Maybe plus two stat to their strength roll or their dex roll or whatever, but they're not really going to deal extra damage. Um, they get one action, just one heart, things like that. So that's, that's your tier one. What's helpful for these ones is that they're easy kills, but like numbers, in numbers, they can be really dangerous. Okay. Then you've got... Your tier two monsters, which are, you know, maybe a little bit more stronger enemies, maybe the leaders. The thing is, is it's not about adding a lot of hearts. It's adding, you know, giving them a bigger stat bonus. It's not really an effort bonus, still one action. And then you give them a piece of gear or a unique attack. And so you're not adding in extra other than, you know, maybe one extra heart. So they stick around a little bit longer, but it's not to the point where it's a slog and you give them a little bit extra then you've got tier three plus six stats two two overall effort plus two to all effort rolls plus two actions they're four heart or they have damage immunity and they get special abilities like area hp drain or you know kill uh, like kill without a roll and yeah tier ones are like minions um, that's kind of the guidelines and again, these are guidelines, uh, not hard, fast rules. It's just an idea that's like, oh, if you're in here looking at the monster manual and you're, like, you're not finding something that you want and you want a mook or a minion, 
then this is the kind of stuff that you're, yeah, will will best serve you to get you in the general bar ballpark, and then you can work from there. But you can see how they kind of stack up. Then lastly is a tier four monster. Like this is high tier supreme enemy type stuff, you know. Like hearts don't matter, vampires, dragons, things like that. Like even if they're defeated, they don't actually die. Um, just merely delayed, but you can see that like when you're dealing with a tier four, you're dealing with plus eight stats, plus four effort, three actions, four hearts, damage immunity, and self healing actions, and they have at least one special ability that includes like area blast, escape and heal, summon extra monsters, destroy gear, change environment, target timer. Like in one little system, you can see how going from a mook to a tier four really ramps up the danger and ramps up the intensity of these monsters. What I also love about this is that as always with Ice RPG, it talks about it kind of really represents you don't hold back when you're dealing with with these enemies. Like it's not about balance. It's about this is a tier 4 monster, take it seriously and hit hard. Be a terror to behold if you're dealing with tier 4. But even with a tier 1, like don't make it just so they're, they're, you know, always things. Include the numbers, include the stats, include, you know, a lot of them, all those all things like that. So, like, when you get up to this level, when you're dealing with the tiers, just go for it. Don't worry about it. The balance. And so, um, like, if we were writing on the worksheet, one way that I could do it is I could say, oh, I want to have a tier 2 monster. Okay, so immediately it gets my brain into a space where, okay, I know that they have essentially two hearts. You know, they, they have a plus two, you know, or plus a plus four to their rolls. Um, and then they have some kind of special ability or some extra gear or things like that. So it, it starts, it just jump starts the design process when you know your tier. Okay, uh, the next one is the categories, and this came from GM Grizzly. And so he had some categories that, again, not hard, fast rules, but these are ways that you can jumpstart what your monster design is um, overall. And so minions, for example, are simple creatures, whatever, the, they're Lots of lots of numbers, um, but they can get you get killed quickly. But the things that they have in common are you can summon reinforcements, and they want to fight in hordes in in large groups. Take you know small uh, goblins, bunch them together. Now you have a horde of goblins, which is a completely different thing than just a single goblin. Um, you know it's like taking a tier one monster and bumping them up to a tier two or even a tier three, depending on the size. But again, it's jump-starting that, uh, that mindset of what it, what your monster is. Then you've got Harbingers, which are, these are like the lieutenants, the tough guys, the high-powered, you know, they could probably drop a PC in a single strike if they really wanted to. Um, you know, maybe they're, they're the second in command to the big bad, and so they're going to have some gear, some extra abilities, and so understanding that it's a minion or a harbinger makes a difference of what you're dealing with. Then you've got undead. Um, so undead for Jim Grizzly, they are more unique in the sense that they deal things like smoke afflictions from Ghost Mountain. You have heavy resistance to certain things. Um, they really kind of can affect your player more than just death. Like they can... Uh, knock down stats, curse them, things like that. So if you're dealing with undead for GM, from GM Grizzly's point of mind, uh, point of view is like, there's more at risk than just dying when you're dealing with the undead. Then you've got surprise. Um, these things are obviously things specialized in like ambushing. Um, but the thing about a surprise threat is that, um, you're you're trying to say the, the the real risk of this monster isn't necessarily in a toe to toe match. It's if this one shows up around the corner, like I'm screwed. That's what I don't want. And so you can surprise uh, 
surprise them that way. Um, then you got chunks, which are just creatures or vehicles or, or things like that that um, deal with chunks. They have pieces to them. So rather than just actions, it's like, okay, this monster has this chunk, this chunk, this chunk. And if I take out this chunk, then they can't use this ability anymore. And then finally, you've got the boss, which is, you know, the same thing, you know, essentially a tier four where they have a big, uh, big impact on the world. You show up to them that you're likely not going to kill them, um, but you are going to deal with some utter consequences if you fail uh, to defeating them. So those are your categories. Yeah. Then um, let's talk about these base ac actions. And what this base actions and timer actions and death rattle are is um, from Lon's, uh, what he shared, was that essentially you give something, an, an action that a monster can use every turn in some way. So a base action is what they have pretty much accessible all the time. A timer action is something that they have access to as the timers go off. And then a death rattle is essentially what happens when they're bloodied, when they get down low on health, when the, the fight takes a turn for the worse for them, what action do they now have available to them? And um, so if you can think of base action, timer actions, death rattle, you kind of have a progression of what monsters can do when they're fresh all the way to the, like, to the very end, and it builds up to more and more deadly things. So base actions are more simple. Timer actions have a big impact, but it's looking forward to it. It kind of, you, you see it coming, and then the death rattle is like that last ditch effort from the monster to survive or to get away and it can be, be pretty bad um, and then lastly on the sheet we have the challenge and again this came this comes from uh, the GM section of the the book uh, of ICRPG um, so it's when you're making monsters let's see if I can find where it's at in here as I flip through it pages. Okay. Um, see, look how nice it is flipping through ICRPG. Like, uh, okay, apparently Monster Maker. Is it in the back of the table section? Ah, well, let me look at core because I also know it's, know it's in core. So, in core, essentially, what the challenge is, is that rather than uh, designing out specifically, like, I'm just going to stand here and take a hit, you can actually um, assign out what kind of challenge do you want your players to face and build your monster around that. Just similar to how we practice disruption, it's a, it's a category of disruption. These challenges are like a type of challenge category that monsters can have, things like Having lots of actions is a challenge. Behaving in cycles, regenerate. Um, only having one weakness, stealing their gear, force them to move, things like that, so that you can pose different challenges with different monsters to your players. And so that's a good way of highlighting out what kind of things do you want to um, to work on. Okay. <sighs> Enough talk on that. Let's start actually building out some monsters, okay? And so I'm going to go through, um, let's see, do I have, yeah, I have four. So we're going to rush through four monsters um, using essentially the different tier, or the different types of things um, just to kind of jumpstart the process a little bit. And I don't have, obviously, art, but what we'll end up doing is just pulling open uh, you know, hey, we're going to redesign a snake man, okay, using, um, using just this image, we're not going to look at the other stuff, and we'll follow each one of those categories for, like, a different monster. So let's start with that. Let's start redesign our own custom snake man, not looking at this, so all we know is snake man. So let me, and what we're going to do is we're going to use the tier system um, as a guideline 
for it. So we're going to keep our Snake Man as a tier 2. We're going to just Snake Man. Um, so for a tier 2, we've got 2 hearts uh, plus 4 to their stats. Now let's I think that's a plus four is fine. Uh, I want our snake man to be kind of deadly, but the question is, is what stat? I don't think snake men would necessarily be pretty strong. Um, I don't want to like, I don't want to emphasize the, the strength aspect of it. Let's get in focus a little bit better. Uh, Dex is a possibility. If I go with wisdom or intelligence, it's going to be more of a, of a mage snake man and constitution is poison anything but we're not gonna they're not gonna poison him um really and then charisma that'd be a more hip, hypnosis type monster that we're going for so i think with the image that we had he was in this like long robe and so i think we're gonna go with the with the mage style so we're gonna say plus four to intelligence um, he doesn't get effort bonus so we're not going to give him like a plus two uh, or anything to effort bonus and just as a reminder to myself oh there it is that's where i was looking right after the tiers so tier two monsters have Roughly plus four stats, no effort roll, one action, two hearts, and one interesting piece of gear or unique attack ability. So let's see. So plus four intelligence, and let's see. I like the idea of let's let's include a piece of gear and a unique attack for uh, Snake Man. We'll go for the attack. Um, I'm gonna say. We're going to do uh, Poison Cloud. So he can have a special attack where he can magically create a Poison Cloud and then it leads into, you know, Con, Save, or uh, Con, Save equals, or half, uh, half d4 for yeah half for four rounds something like that. i don't know but poison cloud con save he if you make the con save then you take half the damage um over four rounds and then for a special piece of gear let's go with some kind of amulet and the amulet allows him to I don't want to ask necessarily have like a resistance to it uh, but maybe what it can do is it let's yeah let's just have a little bit of resistance but let's do deflect one ranged attack per round teleport teleport that for a tier two jd that's kind of awesome okay so we'll also branch off and maybe have that one Okay, so I can chew on it and think either with the poison cloud, ooh, I think, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, teleport actually, you know, that would actually, it's way cooler than deflect one range because what he can do is poison cloud the group, just blast it out, and it, you know, affects visibility, so I can just note that. Affects visibility, and then he can use his teleport once per round to 
teleport to far. And so it's almost like um, the an octopus's uh, ink ink defense kind of thing. Like blast out the ink, gets away. But with the snake man here, he throws out his poison cloud, teleports somewhere else. While they're dealing with the cloud of smoke that affects visibility, he teleports, and now he can either do something else, cast again, command out the other mooks um, that he's leading out on, um, and or just get in the fray. Especially if like this is part of a group because we just have our snake man mage, so now he's more of a support supporting role, and so you can deal with him first, clear out the bat clear out the field a little bit, and then you can have an easier time dealing with the other snake men because um, you're not going to be attacking this guy all by himself. Boom. Why did I say that? I don't know, but anyways, there we go. That is our tier two. Uh, tier two style monster creation for a snake man, Re recreating um, what we saw in the monster manual, and it's just following out. It doesn't. It's not a lot. It's just hearts roll a little bit. I have a monster. Okay. All right. So we're not going to worry about tiers. Let's talk about um, categories. And for ease, I'm going to pull out, I don't know why I didn't have this last week when I was, or on the disruption one, when I was rolling dice, I felt bad. I needed to have my mono make dice out rather than my blocky, my huge blocky D6s. Um, so let's look at another monster. Where are you, monsters? There you are. Okay, let's go with. Oh, darn you! There. Let's go with a demon. Okay, we're gonna recreate a demon using um, Jim Grizzly's categories. And so, the first thing we're gonna do is decide: minion, harbinger, undead, surprise, chunks, or boss. So I'm gonna roll. One, two, three, four, five, six, five chunks. Okay. We're going to give him apparently six chunks. That'll be fun. And so with my mindset, obviously, if that's the case, he's going to have a huge set of hearts. But it's because each one of these is a chunk. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So with the rolls, I'm not going to really uh, worry about that at the moment. Um, but let's get through chunks. So demon chunks, which is so fun to say. Um, and so we're talking probably some kind of amalgamation of parts, pretty grotesque monster uh, thing. I'm thinking something like huge and bulky and um, all sorts of things. So we're going to go with, um, start with the spiked tail. Spiked tail, you know, reaches far. And it just does a weapon. And then we can say uh, 19 or 20. Uh, we can say uh, they get knocks, knocks, knocks back. Yeah, we'll say knock back. Okay, so on a spike tail, far weapon, if he rolls a 19 or 20, then knocks, the, uh, knocks him back. We can do, let's go with horns is another one. So he's got a bit, his big horns. And so with that, we'll do a charge far uh, in line and then hits all for um, so let's say ultimate but you can dex 
to avoid. Six headed, oh, six headed Hydra and Chimera. Okay, extra head. That's a great one. Extra head. Um, what can the extra head do? I'm just going to go easy and breathe fire. Breathe fire. So this is an area um, all near for magic effort. Starting at the bottom, I know. I just it's the tail. The tail speaks the bottom of the bottom of the list for me. Let's go with another chunk. Uh, he needs a weapon. I'm I'm imagining some big chunky sword. So broken sword, big huge anime style, like bigger than three people lined together. Um, what can the broken sword do? Hmm. I want it to be a little bit more unique than just smash or cut. But does it matter? Does, does it have to be more unique than just smash and cut? Like I've got fire, I've got charge. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go with, let's go with a smash. Um, and then it's going to deal 2d6. 2d6 for a hit. Oh, Dex or die. Okay. Dex or die, so, you know. Dex or they drop. So if you get hit with a sword as it smashes you, you if you don't make your dex save, you drop to zero. I love it. Um, let's see, got two more for my chunks. And so we got a sword, we've got our horns, we've got our spike tail, got an extra head. Okay, let's use something that's maybe not offensive. Let's go with wings. Okay. So what he can do is move far and he can fly. Okay. Um, so yeah, he can move far and he can fly. And we can even say that when he flies, it's on a timer. So he'll fly up on the timer for, for whatever, and then come back down. And so, after the timer goes up, he leaves, swoops over with his um, breathe fire or his tail or something like that, and comes back down. And lastly, let's go with his demon heart. Um, and that allows him to heal a D6 per round. Okay. There's our chunked out monster, uh, demon monster. And so with the chunks, yeah, he has six hearts, but each one of these is a heart. And, you know, maybe you don't have to get all six uh, to do it. This guy is gnarly. I agree. But yeah, so like we're looking at a, at a monster that's intense and definitely we're dealing with a tier, you know, Tier four, big boss guy, so we can think about roles. Um, and so, oh, uh, I don't know what to even say for roles. He's already his all his abilities are really intense as it is. So, yeah, I I, I like the idea of this monster because at least like when you come in, it's it's like okay, do we take out his wings first? Do we take out his sword? Like, do we take out his tail? Do we go for the heart? But everything else is still there. Hmm. Dilemmas. I don't know. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna say for for ease, he's just gonna get plus um, plus one per chunk. So he for every chunk that's still around, he gets a plus one to all rolls. Every chunk. 
that you knock down, you reduce his his bonus. Actually, um, should I go with maybe like if I were to do this monster, would it be better to be a plus two per chunk? That way, when it gets down to just one, if it ever gets to that point, it's still a plus two. I don't know. Maybe a plus two. Think about that. Okay, there's my my uh, chunky demon. Okay, so that is that's using you know the categories from GM Grizzly, and again, you see that it wasn't really ruling how I did things; it just jump started my monster design which is what we're really after with this kind of approach. Okay, next up, we're gonna talk about Lon's base action, timer action, death rattle, bloodied action approach, which I really liked. Now, the one thing that I didn't mention is a really fun way of approaching this kind of method to creating a monster is using loot. So first thing that we'll do is again we're going to pick out a random monster and go with that. So let's go oh, this way. Sorry. Let's go with the dire horn. So we're going to redesign the dire horn using base action, triple timer action, or death rattle. Or maybe we won't even bother with that. I don't know. The the thing that Lon suggested was that with the three categories, what you can do is you can actually roll on the loot table and just assign each one of them to one of these categories and use the loot as the abilities and twist it out that way. So I'm just getting out my dice. And we're going to roll three times on the loot table can be, let's go once on Shabby. All right, with the Dire Horn, I don't know about Shabby. Let's go with twice on the Epic. Okay, oh, sorry. It just does that sometimes. Okay, 83, which is Dragon's Blood. Grows wings, breathes fire for D4 rounds. Okay. So we know we have uh, Dragon's Blood as one of those things. Blood, wings, uh, grows wings, and fire. Breathes fire. Uh, let's roll again on the the epic. Man, thirty nine is Dobbs Cheddar. Add to any food to double the food's effort. Okay. So add to double um, double effort. Okay, and then we'll roll once on, let's go once on the bazaar. How often do you roll on the bazaar table? Let's go with this. We're going to say that is six. Um, sorry, you can, this is, yeah. The finful ring, plus one defense, ring, wreathe in wriggly fins, and swim at triple normal speed. Okay. Finful ring. So swim at triple speed. I don't think we're designing really a dire horn anymore. I think we're designing some kind of fire breathing lake monster. Which I love. Okay. So, 
Merry Fishmas to you too. <laughs> Thank you everybody for stopping in and uh, join us this morning. I know it's pretty early, but it's always fun to just practice. Um, all right. So let's think about, I'm thinking the Dobbs cheddar add double effort. It could be really the death rattle. So he's not going to just bite a chunk of cheese, although that would be awesome in the middle of the fight. But if we're thinking about a, so we're thinking about some kind of lake monster now, rather than a dire horn, we're thinking about some giant sea, uh, water creature. Um, the same kind of thing, but it's just in the in the water. So I'm liking the idea of add to double effort. So at death rattle, what it can be, you know, when he gets down to two hearts or uh, or less, uh, equal to or less, then we double all their effort. Okay, so two hearts or less, all effort is doubled. That's his death rattle um, to really scare off, you know, anything that's attacking them and make it you know, really intense at the very end um, in hopes to survive. Then we've got a uh, timer action, which I think really um, plays into the dragon's blood, grows wings and breathes fire. So on, let's say, a D4 timer, you're fighting this lake monster and you think you're fine because you're on your ship, you're on your boat, whatever, and you're stabbing it and throwing your harpoons. And at the D4 timer, he, you know, launches out, you know, out and flies for, you know, for one round, you know, for one round, flies over your ship, breathing fire. And I mean, if you're thinking about you're on a lake on a ship and all of a sudden this big thing isn't just like grabbing your ship with tentacles, it's now jumping up over your ship, breathing fire from above. I mean, like, that's going to suck, but it's going to be awesome. And so they can look forward to that. And once they know, okay, the next timer comes out, he's going to jump again, prepare yourself, get under, uh, get below deck, douse yourself with water, you know, ready the buckets you can see that coming and now it has access, access to the flying and the the fire breathing. And then for base action, so now it's swim at triple speed. Okay, so we have like base location is, you know, obviously base action is, you know, swim underwater. Or what we can say is he changes location per round. So if you're on the lake dealing with him, he's up on once, he's on the, the port side, now he's on the starboard side. Now he's at the, the I'm going to say the front of the ship, although I can't think of the, I, I know the stern, but I can't think of the front. Um, aft? Bow. It's about the bow of the ship, and then he's at the stern of the ship. And so for his base actions, you're essentially moving around. And then you can obviously, th you can think about other things that he just has access to all the time. You've got, you know, maybe some tentacles, tentacles that you can, you know, grab and pull people off. Um, or they can, you know, have, you know, suckers that latch onto you. And, you know, a lot of, um, like an octopus, if you, or I think, yeah, I think an octopus or other things, sometimes they have like little, like teethies in there, in the suckers that kind of help grab them on. Um, maybe this guy transport deep ones around. And as he moves, he drops them off on the ship. Ooh. Yeah, maybe he does. Maybe he, maybe he, uh, he drops uh, little fishmen, you know, transport sh fishmen. Maybe, you know, similar to uh, when you watch uh, Avengers, you have the big Leviathan thing flying around. Not only is that thing it, its own tank, but it also carries 
the the smaller soldier aliens um, around. So maybe this is the same thing. So transports, uh, delivers, mooks. So they've kind of bred this creature to be their big armored tank thing. Like it. Okay. Yeah. So we've got our little lake monster using base action timer action death rattle to give us an idea of basic actions he can do all the time, timer actions that he does every three, four rounds or so, and then a death rattle is something that changes when he does get down near the end, and that's doubling all effort. Okay. And then last but not least is our challenge. Um, so just as before, like each one of these uh, determines a different approach or a different challenge that a monster might have uh, that the players have to overcome. And this, again, encourages you to move past just standing there and beating the players over their head with a stick. And so you can look at it and think about, okay, what do I want to challenge my players with and design a monster with that in mind? And so let's pick three of them and emphasize those. And obviously some monsters may only have one challenge, um, but let's, as practice, let's think of ways that we could tie in three different, uh, three different challenges. So let me zoom in a little bit more and let's pick three. Otherwise I'll just pick three if no one has any suggestions. Uh, and all of these like descriptions of of what these are are available in the GM section of Master Edition and Core, and so it it helps you understand okay what is what does it mean when it hits all target? Obviously, that's pretty explanatory, but I mean, what is evolve? What is lots of actions? And so it jump starts your brain on what variation could you have on this challenge, and so. I'll pick one, and I think I'm going to go with just as something as Steel Gear. I'm, I'm, I do like monsters that Steel Gear. They're so scary, really scary. Anything that steals gear. Um, let's also go with something like a force move and let's go with something that has uh, create terrain okay so we're thinking of a monster that the challenge is they create terrain they force movement and they steal gear okay for some reason I'm thinking of a worm um, something a tunneling worm okay so we'll just go with that we'll we'll think of a tunneling worm and so the 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 way that we can create terrain and present that element is you know leading into the tunnel so this creature uh creates tunnels which means he has some kind of dig action um, something something where it's like okay he can dig and create a tunnel up to far and reappears so uh, dig, dig action up to far and now he's kind of burrowed under the ground moved over uh, something else and and gone to the other side of the side of the map when you're uh, rather than up top he's under underground so he challenges he creates terrain tunnels um, and the thing is is what we can do is as he creates tunnels he can appear out of any entrance they all connect so it's not just going to be a straight line. The first one is going to be, you know, a dot to dot. And we know 
that there's a tunnel this way. But now there's after another turn, it goes, you know, here and here or whatever. But as he digs the next one and goes, you know, down in, he might connect back up with any of the other ones. And so the longer you're fighting this tunnel worm, the more movement options he's going to have as he digs digs his tunnel. Okay, which which kind of leads into the force movement because now you the players have to move around and think about okay what tunnel entrance is he going to go down what tunnel entrance is he going to come back up in and so you can either you can either lean into the challenge as players now have to move to the places or you can say the tunnel uh, he he as he builds his tunnel he forces uh, a movement for anybody who's within near Okay, so maybe maybe what it will do for that is as he's digging his tunnel, when he reappears, all near uh, tunnel um, kind of exit point, decks or thrown far. Because I mean, I can imagine that a tunnel worm digging under the ground and bursting out of this out of the stone like rocks go flying people will go flying and so uh, if you're standing there as he comes up then it's going to be you got to save save for decks or you're thrown far and now you're completely out of position that you worked so hard to get into and you got to work your way back in as the, he continues digging so hopefully the challenge is one, you gotta stop make you gotta prevent him from making tunnels. Two, if you can make him stop making tunnels, then you can stop him from digging more tunnels and throwing you around. Um, and then finally, we have steel gear. Okay, um, I'm liking the idea of you know he has like tentacles or little like uh, I'm, I, I'm imagining very very thin not chunky tentacles like a kraken but very uh, thin like I don't know it's it's in my head but I can't spell tentacles I'm sorry tentacles and or whatever and so he can grab grab someone or grab grab a piece of loot um, near and what he does is as he goes down drops it in tunnel okay so if you want your gear back you got to go in the tunnel but now being in the tunnel when the 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 creature comes after you um, I don't like I, I want to say like it's like there's since it's a tunnel you're not going to have a deck save you're not going to have a dodge or you know maybe if there's another intersection and maybe I'm not really track I wouldn't really track this um, as like you know you're just in the tunnel you're not and so maybe whatever if you can if you can successfully you know get in spend your turn go under and get out um, then you can get your gear back or you can get random pieces of gear based off of how much is there and so steals gear but drops it in the tunnel so grabs a loot that's near um, we can say uh, we can say strength to resist and go with that so this tunnel worm has an emphasis on three different challenges and now I can work out you know all the stats and everything but it jump started my design process to go how can I create a monster that challenges my players in different ways and what can they what you know how are they gonna react to this um, and then once I have this down then I can work out the specifics of you know the roles some of the basic actions like the actual like logistics of it but I have my basic design and my idea of 
how this monster is going to be against uh, the players. So we've got four different monsters, and I feel like I feel pretty happy with all of these because Chunky Demon isn't something that's just going to stand around there and lead, hopefully, not to a boring fight. Snake Man is is going to be an element to, I feel, an exciting encounter with Snake Man. You have a support, we can now start asking questions and say, okay, we've got a support role. Well, now what does is, what is the Snake Man soldier look like? And we can repeat the process. Lake Monster is, you know, we've got our actions and our different approaches there with base action, timer actions, death rattles, things like that, using items to jumpstart our brain there. And then we've got our tunnel worm, which is an emphasis on different challenges. And so together, there's a lot of different levers when it comes to monsters and a lot of different ways that you can uh, build them out. Now, the other thing that I'll say before calling, calling it this morning is uh, Hankrin did an excellent master class workshop on monsters making and he goes over a lot of like high level approaches to what you can do on making monsters and kind of the process um, to do uh, to make more dynamic monsters uh, things like that and so definitely recommend watching this one um, to, to learn more about monster making as well. And then definitely recommend taking some time and just playing with the, with the different levers. As you, as you can see, there's so many different levers to pull. And like we saw at the very beginning, we have altered state as well, which gives an example of how monsters can be brief. You have core, which is how it can be a little bit longer. Um, and so there's just so many different ways to build these out and I think it's just an element of GMing that we should all practice building monsters, building enemies in different ways and finding what works for us. Okay. Well that's it for this morning you guys. Had some good practice. I'd love to see the kind of monsters that you make. Um, yeah, Reach out on the forums, reach out on Discord, um, do your, whatever you can but yeah I'd love to see the type of monsters you have and especially if, if you use them in your games. So. Thanks for stopping in, everybody. Enjoy your Friday. Um, and have a happy weekend.